Thanks for listening to Middle Aged and Mediocre. I'm Cash. I'm Joel. And uh, we are a podcast about all things strange and unusual, death and UFOs, and other creepy, Cults, weird, random ghosts. stories. There you go. Yeah. No, uh, I'm just naming things in the room. Oh my god. <laughs> There's a cult of ghosts. <laughs> Gun Radio presents Middle Aged and Mediocre. While returning home from a spontaneous road trip, a married couple from New Hampshire have a strange encounter on the road. Once home, they cannot recall two hours of their trip home, and in the days and weeks to follow, they would begin piecing their memories back together and come to the realization that they had been abducted by beings from another planet. That's right, you sons of bitches. We're talking about aliens this episode. You ready to get weird, Joel? Yeah. I'm Cash. That's weird, Joel. I'm weird, Joel. (laughs) And yeah, uh, we're talking talking about aliens. Aliens. This is Middle Age Mediocre. I think this might be our actual first alien episode. We've done one on a... uh, On a cult that believed Jesus was an alien. Yeah. And flew a spaceship. I'd have to go back and listen to them all real fast. You should do that. Get okay. us some more. And you guys are listening right the guy now. That, uh, built a bulldozer. Was he not an alien? He was possibly an alien. Okay. It was never proven one way or the other. Yeah. I so didn't, I didn't want to get into it too deep on that episode. I mean, he did have some advanced uh, vehicular. He probably had Velcro on that thing. Probably. Yeah. I heard so. that. The, I heard NASA stole Velcro from the aliens. Mm. Yeah. What other weird? <laughs> I don't know. I just seriously remember hearing that as a kid. But yeah, all right, we yeah, so we're we're true. back with aliens. We put a, like a poll on Facebook and Twitter uh, uh, asking what sim- what this episode should be about, like aliens, ghosts, uh murder, or and I try to sneak in yeah. history there. Yeah. Uh, cuz I couldn't think of a fourth thing. <laughs> I'm pretty <laughs> I was pretty limited after 3. <laughs> but uh pretty overwhelmingly the response was aliens. So, here you go. We're going to talk about aliens, oh. and the story we're going to talk about, we'll get to it here in a few minutes, but it kind of uh, was the catalyst uh, in the beginning of what like all alien stories became. Uh-huh. So this is kind of like one of the origins all right. of all of these UFO stories. New Hampshire. New Hampshire, but we'll get to that here in a few minutes. Uh, what's going on? It's, it's Friday. It's Friday. We are a week or- removed or so from... Uh, the U.S. Capitol being stormed. Yeah, about 10 days. About 10 days. Yeah. Uh, Coming up on the inauguration. Yeah. Yeah, so that should go well. Should yeah, go. yeah. No problems this, there. It's nice and smooth. Hopefully this will not be our last episode when <laughs> when the whole world self-destructs. But, yeah, uh, things are still standing, so that's good. Yeah. Browns are, uh, they, they won their playoff game. Browns won the playoff Feel game. good about that. I actually wanted to... They, uh, they beat the Steelers, and uh, it was uh, it was a pretty exciting so you know, game. Uh, so I uh, I think that was the day we went and moved. I, I helped you pick up that locker. We picked up the locker on Saturday. They won Sunday. Okay, but one of the like so I said something about how I put money on the game. Yep, on the Browns to win. Uh-huh. And when I got home, I checked, and I had like taken that bet back uh, before. So I would like to go ahead and uh, accept all thank yous. From Cleveland Browns fans oh. everywhere, because and the Browns themselves. Because if I would have left that money on you, yeah, you guys would not have won. I thought that was weird. Yeah, I was like, wow, Josh won money. Yeah, right. It would have been weird. Uh, <laughs> Don't want to start any precedents. It was a really good game, though. Yeah, I mean, they were up twenty-eight nothing, and you knew it wasn't gonna keep going like that. And it was like that feeling where it was just like. Well, it's gonna happen. Yep, yep. Like I was just waiting, and then when the they like, started scoring touchdowns, and it was well, they kind of like just the way that like uh, the Browns like they just tried the same play over and over again, like the running play, yeah. and then they were playing like really bad defense. Yeah, I was just like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> They're gonna lose. Like, the Browns gonna Browns, but they, they won. So They're looking good going into Kansas City. Well, so I was gonna I was gonna get your picks. Okay. For this weekend. All right. Uh. And so I'll go down through the games, 
Los Angeles Rams are going to be playing the Green Bay Packers. And right now the Packers are favored by six and a half points. Yeah, Packers are going to win that. So Packers, you think they cover the six and a half points? Yeah, they'll win by over a touchdown. By over a touchdown. Sure. All right, then we got the Ravens, which this is the game I'm most looking forward uh-huh. to. Uh, actually, uh, Chiefs and Browns should be fun as shit. Yeah, the AFC games are looking really good. The Ravens and Bills, though. Uh, Bills favor two and a half. I think the Ravens are going to – I want the Ravens to win so the Browns can have a rematch with the Ravens when they beat the Chiefs. Okay, all right. I like your storyline thinking. So then let's get into <laughs> – I'm booking this. We know where this is going to go. Browns. <laughs> this the playoffs. Yeah, Browns, Browns and Chiefs. Browns underdog 10 points. 10 points? 10 point underdog. Better put some respect yeah, on my name. They're giving the Browns no respect whatsoever. <laughs> Damn, Browns. Browns. Browns all day, twice on Sunday. All right, and then the last game, uh, the Buccaneers and Tom Brady against the New Orleans, New Orleans Saints and Drew Brees. And Drew and uh, Drew Brees and the Saints uh, are a uh, over th- or wait, favored by three. I'm sorry, I fell asleep just thinking about that game. Of that game? Yeah. Um, New Orleans, Saints. All right. My yeah. goal is to not watch a single snap of that game. I just don't. And like, I like football, but I – that – no thanks. You think they'll win by at least more than three? Um, yeah. All right. They've, they've handled the Buccaneers this year. I do know that. Beat them bad. Yeah, I just don't have much interest in that game. Yeah, it could, I mean, if both quarterbacks decide – Tom Brady, seen it. Seen a lot. Yeah. Drew, Drew Brees, Brees seen it way seen too it. much. Yeah, I mean, good for those guys. Yeah, I, mean, I guess I should watch them because they're both older than me. I mean, it'll so. probably be it'll probably be Brees' last game if they lose. Yeah, maybe, probably. I mean, I feel they're like not, probably what the the lar- or the highest combined age of a. Uh, d- I we were talking to. about that. Yeah, I can't. Should like, be with Allen and Warren Moon starting against like Joe Montana late in their career. That's like I the only thing that think could be. Neither of them played that late though. Yeah. Yeah, those are the games. What are your picks? So my picks, uh, Packers. Definitely agree with that one. I think they'll cover the six and a half. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And then I also I'm taking the Bills. Oh, Bills. Uh, to cover the two and a half. I hate the Ravens, so I'd be okay if the Bills won. I just would like for the Browns to be able to play the Ravens and beat them again. I mean, beat I'm, them at last. They lost to them twice this year. Yeah. Uh, Browns and Chiefs. Browns and Chiefs. Uh, the ten. I mean, I want the damn Browns to win. Yeah. I want that Browns and Bills game is what I want because I think that would just be really fun. Yeah. Uh, you can say Chiefs. Say I Chiefs. mean, I Chiefs haven't covered hardly at all this year. Uh-huh. Like, they've been playing way too many close games. They haven't played in two weeks. Mahomes hasn't played in three weeks. I feel like it's either going to be that – because, I mean, uh, Mayfield can, like – have a shootout with Mahomes. Uh-huh. I was I, I heard something where like so last time they played each other in college. Yeah. Uh, Texas Tech and uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. They Baker Mayfield threw for like five hundred some yards and had seven touchdowns I think yeah. or five touchdowns or whatever. Mahomes threw for seven hundred and some yeah. yards, had seven touchdowns like two of them were his. Uh huh. And then but Mayfield and Texas Tech still won. Yeah. What, or no, Mayfield was for Oklahoma. So yeah, then Oklahoma. Mahomes, yeah. Mahomes was Texas Tech. Okay. So hopefully uh, Mayfield can beat him again. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Browns. Woo! I'm taking the Browns. They I, don't need to play the game. Call the NFL. I mean, I'll, they're definitely going to, I think, cover the 10. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I think they'll be able to hold them. Yeah, I don't know. I just think the Browns are going to. I think it's going to be like whoever wins, it's going to be like 35 to 42. It's going to be. I think it's going to be. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of touchdowns. And I uh, think. And then I'm going to take the Bucks. The so Buccaneers. Taking, I just, yeah, I think uh, the past few weeks they've been pretty good, so I'm going to go Bucks. Yeah. So, uh, same there. Uh, I'm taking the Bills. Same there, and then I'm taking the Bucks. All right. So, I'm probably going to lay a bet down on what you picked, <laughs> see how that works out. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> go Browns. That's all I really care about, though. I'm calling all those the, picks could be wrong, and I'd be I'm calling, calling out all of them. I'm thinking the Bills were going to win the Super Bowl is what I'm hoping, so yeah. I'm pulling for the Bills all the way right now. Josh Allen's really fun. There's so many good quarterbacks. Yeah. 
But all right, yeah. So NFL. hey, those are our picks. So that's pretty much gospel right there. Uh huh. Somehow, if you work out, call the NFL. We've got every team covered. Just put the Browns in the Super Bowl. Well, you want the Bills in the Super Bowl though. Yeah. Ooh. Put the put the put, put the Browns and the Bills in the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Make it the first time ever. <laughs> it's been a wacky year. It's been a weird year, guys. All right. Well, do you want to uh, you want to talk about aliens? Yeah, man. Tell me about them. How are you? Uh, what What are your quick thoughts before we get into it on aliens? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't. <laughs> that, that's why people are tuning in here. <laughs> Strong stances from Joel. <laughs> Prove me wrong. <laughs> no, you believe that. I really don't know. Uh, you know, sure, it could be out there. I can't think. I, I think that's pretty crazy to think that we're the only, like, life only forms. Things. Yeah. Yeah, sure. They're out there. They're out there? All right. Yeah. Well, let's see if this I don't. I've never seen them, and if I have, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know the X-Files music. I was going to try to do it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of hear it in my head, but... All right, so well, maybe this story we'll see how if it sways your opinion in any way. All right, so uh, like I said, uh, this takes place in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and the this... Garden State. Is it? Nope, that's New Jersey. That's New Jersey. Right? But they better start with New. <laughs> that's true. So it's pretty close to being yeah. right. Uh, so we're gonna talk about Betty and Barney Hill. Betty and Barney. Betty and Barney. King of the Hill. Lived in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, Barney was employed by the United States Postal Service. First off, just imagine being named Barney. 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 And then your wife's name is Betty. That's like, all the... oh, wait, Betty was married to Fred and Barney was married to, wait, no. No, Wilma was married to Fred. Okay, that is just that like is just the Flintstones. Like the Flintstones. <laughs> Uh, but unlike ah, the unlike the is that the episode? That's the whole episode. We just solved it, <laughs> man. Wait, what was our salute? What was our? <laughs> that that is the name of the. No, oh, those are the names. Yeah, we <laughs> you solved can't that. Even one. Remember what we solved? We solved what we solved. We solved what we're we working solved. overtime. Turn off the mics. Uh, well, one thing unlike the Flintstones characters, All right, Betty and Barbie, uh, the Hill. thing the Flintstones would never allow. They Fort were an, they were an interracial couple. Okay. Uh, Barney was uh, black and Betty was white. Uh, I will show you a picture of them later, and uh, I'll describe Betty as you know, uh, Colin Mockery, the uh, Saturday Night Live weekend update guy. No, no uh, Colin McRae. Maybe I'm thinking the wrong. He's from uh, that Drew Carey show, the improv show. Nah, not bald <laughs> guy. <laughs> not real. Oh, yeah. I think I do. It's like call, whatever, about. but the but Betty Betty looks like him. Betty Hill looks like him in a in a old fifties wig. Okay. So and then so uh, good looking gal. Oh Barney Hill, handsome woman. Barney Hill's got a got a weird head on him. So what I'm saying is <laughs> these two are aliens. All right. And I will have a whole <laughs> I have a whole theory about all of this. So all weird head and. Oh, weird head and uh, improv guy. Face, improv face. So uh, she was a social worker, Betty was. They were both active in the uh, local, uh, their church congregation, and they were members of the NAACP, uh, and they were heavily involved in civil rights. So Upstanding according, citizens. Upstanding citizens. <clears throat> I like them. Betty and Barney. But then on... Uh, uh, Around 1961, September of 1961, they decide on the spur of the moment that they're going to take a road trip. Uh, they've both been... That's why you got to think and think and then overthink <laughs> and then question what you're overthinking. Every decision. Not them. Okay. So they were just First like... First mistake. They were like, let's just do this. Should we do this? They both why been are we doing busy. this? Yeah, they've both been working a lot. So they finally decided that they were going to uh, take a trip. They'd been married for 16 months. And they decided that they were going to kind of take a late honeymoon and make a trip through Montreal and Niagara Falls. That'd be pretty. So they left so, like, spur of the moment that they didn't even uh, have time. Like, the bank was already closed. Uh Uh-huh. So they just had 70 bucks with them is all they had for this big road trip. What year is this? So it's 1961. So... I don't know what inflation. Yeah, I, but I mean, there's no ATMs along the way. No, they can't get cash back when they get gas. No, so if you don't, Are they ride the horses. 1961. That was before my time. 
Uh, yeah, they still have horses. So, yeah, I mean, if something would have happened, I don't know how much money, 70 bucks would have been. Yeah. But. So they take like a three-day road trip. And uh, on the last night of their three-day trip, they're stopping off at a diner in Vermont. Uh, and they're kind of deciding whether they should – they want to keep going, so they're like getting the coffee, get a little bit of a buzz going. Yeah. And Barney, he decides that if they just keep driving – through the night, they can uh, beat a storm that's supposed to be coming in from an approaching hurricane. Time. Make great time. Oh, man. So they leave this diner around 10 p.m. So they're trying to get ahead of uh, bad weather, too. I bad weather. Catch off. Okay. Yeah, yeah. there was apparently an approaching hurricane coming All through. Right. So uh, they leave the diner around 10 p.m., and they're figuring they're going to be home in New Hampshire, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, sometime between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. at the latest. That's not too bad. Yeah. So they're about four hours out then. Uh, so according to a variety of reports given by the Hills, Barney and Betty, uh, as they're driving home on September 19th, 1961, they are just south of Lancaster, New Hampshire, and Betty claims that she observed a bright point of light in the sky that moved from below the moon and the planet Jupiter upward to the west of the moon. Uh, while Barney navigated U.S. Route 3, Betty reasoned that she was observing a falling star, uh, only that it was moving upwards. Okay. So, since uh, it moved erratically and grew bigger and brighter, uh, Betty urged Barney to stop the car for a closer look, as well as to walk their dog, Delcy. Weird name for a dog. Delcy. Delcy. Is, yeah. uh, so, Barney stopped at a scenic uh, picnic area just south of the Twin Mountain, Betty, looking through binoculars, observed an odd-shaped craft flashing multicolored lights uh, traveling across the face of the moon. Uh, because her sister had several years earlier said that she had seen a flying saucer, uh, Betty thought it might be what she was observing. Through binoculars, uh, Barney observed what he reasoned was a commercial airliner traveling toward Vermont on its way to Montreal. However, he soon changed his mind because without looking as if it had turned, the craft rapidly descended in his direction. Mm. So usually airliners don't do that. They don't take hard left turns. Uh, This caused Barney to realize that this was not a plane. Uh, So he quickly gets back to the car and the two start driving again. Like Whatever the fuck that was, we don't don't need in our lives. We need to drive. These are the 60s. We got enough damn problems as it is as we are. uh, Hurricane on our ass. Yeah. So the Hills Get claimed, the damn dog. Uh, Barney and Betty claimed that they continued driving, uh, moving very slowly through uh, the roads in order to observe the object as they even came closer. So like that scene in the Goodfellas where Henry Hill at the end is just looking up through the, the helicopter. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of what I picture these two doing. Uh, that so would be freaky. At one point, the object passed above, above a restaurant and signal tower on top of Cannon Mountain. Uh, and came out uh, on the other side of the mountain. Betty testified that it was at least one and a half times the length of a giant or of a granite cliff profile, whatever that is. But they were about forty feet long. Okay. So she's saying it was at least sixty feet long. I was gonna, I was hoping that she was going to like use hot dogs. Use, you know, <laughs> one of I these mean, sides I, is going to come like, up. <laughs> yeah, I feel like our unit of measurement's not appreciated. Yeah. By the world, and but it should maybe, be. Maybe the Betty would, you know, Betty Hill. And there's two different ways to measure a hot, using hot dog uh-huh. as your measurement. Yeah, you can just go like the, like you know, the length of it. Yep. Or th- or the the width of wow, it. I never thought about the width. <laughs> so you know, be a lot more hot dogs. <laughs> a lot more hot. Dogs. I'm on board. Yeah. Boil them first. <laughs> Look, all we're saying is the hot dogs <laughs> offer a world of possibilities. <laughs> yeah. You can measure with them, then you when you're done measuring, you're like, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. We got all these hot dogs. Chomp chomp. <laughs> uh, I got all these hot dogs. I have six, <laughs> six and three quarter inches of hot dogs. Yum. Uh, yeah. So it was about sixty feet long, and it Betty seemed to be to it. seemed to be rotating. Uh, they both watched uh, as the craft move erratically back and forth in the sky. So approximately one mile uh, south of Indian Head, wherever that is, the object rapidly descended toward their vehicle. He's smiling. Indian Head is? Indian Head. Uh, Oh. Oh. He's smiling. It's got the word head in it. There you go. (laughs) 
Okay. <laughs> uh, Sorry, go on, go on. Yeah. Uh, the <laughs> Wow. The huge silent craft hovered approximately 80 to 100 feet above uh, the hills' 1957 Chevy Bel Air and filled the entire view of the windshield. Uh, Barney would later say that it looked like basically a giant pancake. So that sounds delicious. All right. I, I mean, mean we're, we're using pancakes Are now. aliens pancakes? Because I love aliens. How many hot dogs away was he from this pancake? <laughs> Let's see. 80, how many sausage links? 80 to 100 feet. So how many, <laughs> how many oh, hot man. dogs do you think that is? Giant pancake. Maybe he was hungry. <laughs> Had the munchies. Yeah. Uh, using binoculars. Well, he has, a, and he has a, so they pull over, uh, carrying his pistol in his pocket. Uh, he stepped away from the vehicle and moved closer to the object. So this thing has just, like, landed near uh-huh. him, this pancake. He takes a gun to a UFO fight. Yes. Uh, using the Come binoculars. Come on, Barney. Barney claimed to have been able to observe about 8 to 11 humanoid figures who were peering out of the craft's windows, uh, seeming to look at him all in, uh, and in unison, all but one figure moved to what appeared to be a panel on the rear wall of the hallway in the front portion of the craft. Uh, the one remaining figure continued to look at Barney and communicate a message telling him to stay where you are and keep looking. So just, hey, hold that, hold it, keep yeah. keep <laughs> looking, keep looking. Like, I was already going to do that. You didn't have to tell me. Uh, you're aliens. Well, what am I going to do, look away? Like, all right, I've had enough of these aliens, <laughs> whatever. Right. Boring. <laughs> Come on, Betty. Get whatever the fuck we named our dog and let's go. Uh, Barney Del- had a... What was the name of the dog? Uh, uh, Del- Delcy. Delcy. Okay. D-E-L-S-E-Y. Delcy, Delcy, Del- Del- no. Uh, I don't know why they called her Delcy. Uh, using the binoculars, so he claimed... Yeah, so they're looking out at him. Uh, Barney had a recollection of observing the humanoid forms wearing glossy black uniforms and black capes. Uh, or caps. They're in the fashion. Like hats. Oh, yeah, they're very caps. fashionable. Okay. Uh... Red lights on what appeared to be a bat wing, bat wing type fins began to telescope out of the sides of the craft, and the long structure descended from the bottom of the craft. Uh, so it's about 300 feet away from him at this point, not too high up in the sky. And he kind of just he throws the binoculars down away from his eyes. He runs back to the car. He jumps in. And he tells Betty that they're going to capture us, and then he turns the car on and they take off yeah so real quick 1960s uh interracial couple yep i don't know how new hampshire is uh racially that area but well, definitely if, north so i mean hopefully like they had to have like yeah but that had to be like a thing of their lives yeah. so if you're betty and you're chilling in the car and it's night and your husband comes running back screaming they're going to capture us it's got to be kind of terrifying. Yeah. It's got to be not the most cr- cr- awesome thing to hear. I didn't expect that. So, uh, yeah, so this whole story, like, uh, there, I, I won't get too much into that part because it's not really the alien related, but, like, there was a lot of stuff that happened because they were an interracial, or an interracial couple. Like, for whatever reason, the media and stuff, like, hammers that as, like, a point oh, yeah. and tries to say that, like, in one, in some ways, they try to twist it like that's why the aliens were like a, a pick them. Oh. And then in other ways, they were trying to like say that these two, like, just wanted attention, and that was the only reason they were even together. Like, there's so much weird shit about them. Uh-huh. People look into that part, anyways. I just thought it was like they're very interesting people. Yeah. And they got like all this weird attention put on them, and like they really didn't want it. Like, we'll get into it, but I just wanted to sidestep there for about these two, and the weird kind of life they had. Um, so he, uh, she rolls down the window to look up after he tells her to start looking for it, to keep an eye on it. And almost immediately they hear a rhythmic series of beeping or buzzing sounds, uh, which they said seemed to bounce off the trunk of their vehicle. The car vibrated and a tingling sensation passed through the hills' bodies. They said that they experienced the onset of an altered state of consciousness that left their minds dulled. A uh, second series of... Hell Yeah. <laughs> A second series of beeping or buzzing sounds returned the couple to full consciousness. They found that they had traveled nearly 35 miles, but only had vague, spotty memories of that section of the road. 
They recalled making a sudden, unplanned turn, encountering a roadblock, and observing a fiery orb in the sky. Uh, so, yeah, they're just saying they're just driving. All of a sudden, they start hearing vibrations and tingling. Uh-huh. And then, like, yeah, it sounds like they kind of get, like, Brain goes dull. real high for, like, a little, you know. Yeah. And then they just come back. 30 miles later. Uh, so, arriving home about dawn on the 20, on the next day, uh, the Hills asserts that they had some odd sensations and impulses that they could not really explain. Uh, Betty insisted that their luggage be kept near the back door rather than in the main part of the house. Their watches would never work again. Uh, the toes of... Or what Barney said, that the leather strap, strap for the binoculars was torn, uh, though he could not recall it tearing at any point. Uh-huh. And the toes of his best dress shoes were scraped. Uh, he says he was compelled to examine his genitals in the bathroom. I'm com- <laughs> I'm often compelled to <laughs> to examine your genitals. I know. Uh, though he found nothing unusual. Uh, and then they would both take long showers to remove possible contamination. Uh, and they each would start to like draw what they had observed. So like they're both kind of going through this same uh-huh. weird. Some new weird little ticks and habits. Uh, perplexed, they said they tried to reconstruct the chron- uh, chronology of events as they witnessed the UFO and drove home. Uh, but immediately upon hearing the buzzing sounds from the trunk, the memories become uh, incomplete and fragmented. So after sleeping for a few hours, Betty awoke and placed the shoes and clothing she had worn during the drive uh, uh, into her closet. Um, observing that she had a dr- uh, tear in her dress. Um, there was one like at the hem of the dress. There was one near the zipper. And then there was one like in the lining. So like her dress was kind of all yeah. messed up. Disheveled. Uh, later, when she retrieved the items from her closet, she noticed that there was like a pinkish collared powder on her dress. Uh, when she hung the dress up on her clothesline, the pink powder blew away. Uh, the dress was too damaged to even wear anymore. She threw it away at one point, but then changed her mind, uh, grabbed it. And then, um, throughout the years now, uh, laboratories have conducted like analysis on it, uh-huh. but they haven't like, they don't find anything that isn't known to us already. Yeah. Uh, and then on the trunk of their car, there were these shiny circles, like, uh, uh, almost like sunspots, like on the, all of a sudden. Oh. Um, but just on the trunk? Just on the trunk. Two little, perfectly same yeah. size. Uh, Betty and Barney experimented with a compass, noting that when they moved it close to the spots on the car, uh, the needle of the compass would start like whirling around all rapidly. And then as soon as they would move it away from those spots, yeah. it would just go back to normal. So, kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, on September 21st, Betty telephoned the uh, a local Air Force base to report their UFO encounter. Uh, though for being, for fearing being labeled a, eccentric, uh, she withheld some of the details. On September 22nd, uh, Major Paul W. Henderson telephoned the Hills for a more detailed interview. Henderson's report, dated September 26th, uh, determined that the Hills had probably misidentified the planet Jupiter. And then he uh, forwarded his report to Project Blue Book, which was the USA, uh, U.S. Air Force's UFO research Project Blue group. Book. So we might talk about Project Blue Book at another point. Uh, the CIA just recently dumped, uh, they had to, like, as part of the COVID relief package that just got passed, uh-huh. uh, there was a little part put in there that, like, made the CIA had to turn over all their UFO files. It was a weird thing to shove in the COVID. Yeah. So uh, they became available for download, which I did. There are 713 pages. Damn. And that's just what was has been put online so far. There was actually oh. like 22 million documents. Oh, my God. I think it is. I've went through a lot of these. Uh, and while none of them are like, like nothing in there says like, Aliens are real, like, yeah. whatever. But, like, there's a lot of weird... Bill's all an alien. <laughs> there's a lot of, like, uh, one I took a note about. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, right field, um, like, W-R-I-G-H-T, like... Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty famous, like, airfield. 
there's a lot of talk of there was a UFO recovered there and like a weird signal. Um, so the airfield would keep getting a hold of the CIA and they would want, uh, like they were supposed to be given an update on like, what was it we found yeah. and what was that transmitter or what was that sound? Like they heard. And what's weird about the things is like, so like the, the memos back and forth are basically one person telling another one that they need to like, that this guy's bothersome and yeah. they just keep asking and like, uh, at some point they're going to need to like give him a story. They yeah. don't, so like they never admit anything, but they're so, they never deny anything either. Sounds like they're trying to hide something too. You know? Yeah. Like they always talk about like, uh, so there's one I got put up right now that it just says, uh, there's a bunch of redacted information. So it says contacts, Washington, uh, believe established agency channels, then redacted, and New York will handle uh, ORD requests for UFO fact or fancy, quote-unquote, which is apparently some sort of uh, publication at the time. <laughs> and it says if we get into this, we could have routine films and stories that generally confuse the relation, the harmonious relationship, which is weird. They're talking about confu- using these things to confuse people. Yeah. So it's just a weird, like, they don't admit things, but... And that's just the stuff they've released, so I bet... Yeah. I mean... Well, when, like, the guy wanting information, they keep saying, like, to stall him. Uh Uh-huh. But I feel like, like, they could... Because they even say at one point, the guy just, like, wants to know if it's uh, just a hoax. Yeah. Or whatever it was. Like, couldn't they easily just have been like, okay, yeah, it's a hoax. Yeah. If you accept that, yes. Yeah. But, like, they always want to keep it secret, and... So, I don't know. I'm going to keep digging through all of these things. I almost don't trust the government. (laughs) I tell you what. Do you want to get in? <laughs> For the next 15 minutes, turn tell me why. Around, just to turn it back around. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to keep digging through those. And then, I like, there's a few different websites I'm following to see if anybody finds anything. So, right. there's probably not anything, but who Something knows. come out. Uh, and we could break the story. Yeah. So, within days of the encounter, Betty borrowed a UFO book from a local library. Uh, it had been re- written by retired Marine Corps uh, Donald Kehoe who was also the head of uh, the NICAP, I'm not, which I'm not exactly sure what that is, uh, but it's some sort of UFO-related, a civilian UFO research group. What was it called? NICAP. Yeah, you know me. National Institute something, something, something. Cool. NICAP yep. is the initial spell. <laughs> uh, she told him the full story, uh, and this time she even talked about the humanoid figures uh, which she had withheld before. Uh, She wrote that her and Barney were considering hypnosis to help recall what happened. And uh, her letter was eventually passed on to Walter Webb, a Boston astronomer. So he met with the Hills on October 21st, 1961, and conducted a six-hour interview with them. Wow. They related all they could about the encounter. Uh, Barney asserted that he had developed a mental block of sorts, though. And that he suspected there were some portions of the event that he just simply did not wish to remember. He described in detail all that he could uh, remember about the craft and the appearance of the somehow human but not human looking figures aboard the craft. And Webb would go on to state that uh, they were telling the truth and the incident probably occurred exactly as reported, Uh except for some minor uncertainties. So he's kind of on board with them here. Uh... Betty begins having weird, vivid dreams uh, over a five-night period. Uh, and even in her like her memory, she couldn't recall the details that her dreams seemed to be recalling. Uh, after five nights, they abruptly stopped, but she kept thinking about them, and she would begin writing down the details of her dreams. Uh, in one dream, she and Barney encountered a roadblock and men who surrounded their car. She lost consciousness but struggled to regain it. Uh, She then realized that she was being forced by two small men to walk in a forest in the nighttime. Uh, And as Barney would walk behind her, she would call out to him, and he seemed to be in a trance. Uh, These men appeared nearly human with black hair, dark eyes, uh, big noses, and bluish lips, and their skin was gray. But they were little? But they were little. Huh. Uh, In the dreams... um, 
they would all, Betty and Barney both, and all the little men would walk up into a disc-shaped craft. Uh, of a what shape? Disc-shaped. Disc. Disc-shaped. Okay. Uh, once inside, they'd be separated. Uh, and even though she would be protesting to the leader, is what she was told it was, uh-huh. uh, he would say that if her and Barney were examined together, it would take, too long, it would take much longer to conduct the exams. Uh, so then the exams would happen, uh, and the examiner would speak to her in English, and he would tell her, uh, or he would seat her on a chair where a bright light was shown in her eyes. Uh, they would cut off locks of her hair. They would examine her eyes, ears, mouth, and teeth. Uh, they'd take uh, trimmings from her fingernails. Uh, they'd take, like, a small dull knife and, like, scrape some skin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he would test her uh, nervous system, and he would thrust like this big knees, uh, n- uh, needle into her belly button. Cool. So uh, when the leader would eventually, like they would talk so much that he would say that she could uh, have this book, like she g- and it gave her a book, but then the other little men didn't want her having it, so she never had it. So <laughs> like she would end up taking her dreams where she described all this stuff, uh-huh. and later she would basically make it, Assume, she would assume that that was what actually happened. That this was her dreams. Like, She's just remembering. Yeah. Uh, so all this. Um. Although the hills, so the hills talk uh, with some more people involved in this NICAP group, and uh, they noted that while um, they arrived home later than anticipated, um, they could not account for. Uh, hours yeah, of the what, trip. Yeah, what happened yeah. during that time? Um, wow, hours. Yeah, that's long enough to get probed. <laughs> you could definitely get some probing done oh, in two yeah. hours. Uh, so at some point, Trust somebody su- suggested uh, hypnosis. So they decided to do that. Uh, they went to. And they quit the- smoking. They quit smoking. Good for them. <laughs> Mine just started shooting on all cylinders again. Lost weight, quit smoking. <laughs> Good for the hills. <laughs> uh, so they attend this uh, meeting at their church where there was a uh, guest speaker. His name was uh, Captain Ben H. Sweat of the United States Air Force. And uh, he was there just to read, apparently, some stuff out of his poetry book he had just published. <laughs> Captain Emotions over here. <laughs> Hell of a show to go to. You yeah. Know what I mean? uh, yeah, nothing better than going to church to hear some dude read poetry. Uh, so he ends up talking to the Hills, um, and for some reason, like, I don't know what his poetry is about, but they decide uh, to tell him about their weird uh-huh. shit they've just been through. They're like, hey, you're a, you're a poet and a United States Air Force person. And a church. Or <laughs> you will love this. Yeah. Uh, so, but it turns out he was very interested, uh, mostly because of the missing time. Like uh-huh. he just thought it was very interesting. They just could not recall, uh, which, you know, I wrote a poem about it. If <laughs> time, man, <laughs> time, man, <laughs> aliens, man, Pink Floyd would later make it a hit. Oh yeah. Uh, so they, uh, they ask sweat cause I'm, and again, I don't know if this guy like in his poetry, he talked about this or whatever but, but they just ask him if he would hypnotize them to recover the memories oh and uh he told him i'm not qualified to do that yeah um and you shouldn't just go to like some guy that says he does like you should look for somebody professional yeah. so uh this was in november 23rd of 62 so the following september he would be back at the church Poetry, bringing him back. Poetry. He's on tour. Well, this time he was giving a formal lecture on hypnosis. Oh, okay. So he, he, they don't planted the the seed in his brain. He's like, yeah. Like I feel they like hypnotized maybe hypnotized him, right? So I feel like maybe some of this guy's poems, like there a lot of hypnosis talk in them. So they're like, we can probably probably ask him uh-huh. to hypnotize us. And then once they ask him, that, he's like, man, you ought to. I should become a hypnotist. Yeah, I, I do look like the kind of guy that can <laughs> yeah. hypnotize a motherfucker. Yeah. So he comes back in September. He's a he's a hypnotist. He's a hypnotist now. He's giving lectures. Uh, so the Hills approach him once again, and he convinces them 
to, uh, or he said that he has been going to a psychiatrist named Mr. Stevens, who he really liked and trusted. So he suggested that he that they ask him to do the hypnosis. So this they meet uh, Mr. Stevens here, the psychiatrist, on December fourteenth, nineteen sixty three. So this is a pretty long process. Uh-huh. A couple years now they've been talking to this Air Force hypnotist. So you think it'd be a lot? They're just trying to get attention or whatever, like people said. What is it? I said you think it'd be a lot to go through. Yeah. What didn't really you know? If you're just trying they to didn't get believe it. To happen. Yeah. Uh. I mean, and they're going about it in such a weird way. Like they're just like asking random yeah. people, like, "You want to hypnotize us?" And I like your church poetry. <laughs> the way you rhymed "God" with "bod." <laughs> dad bod, God. <laughs> Dear God, thanks for the dad bod. <laughs> Amen. Rod. Uh, so they meet the psychiatrist, um, and early in their discussions, uh, this guy's name is Benjamin Simon, by the way. Um, because they go to, so they go to Stevens guy yeah. who's a psychiatrist. He then refers them to Benjamin Simon. Uh-huh. That's so I love that even like they're like they ask him about hypnosis and he's just like God no, <laughs> go to like everybody just keeps passing him on down. Uh-huh. Uh, so I don't know if I don't think anybody actually does hypnosis uh, is my theory. Uh, so early on he determines that the UFO encounter was uh, causing Barney way much. Way more anxiety than Barney had been admitting. So though, proud uh, man, you know you can't you can't admit the feelings. That's right. Uh, so he dismissed the uh, extraterrestrial hypothesis um, as impossible. He did think that it was much more likely um, that they had identified some sort of un- or they had. Observed some sort of unidentified flying object, uh-huh. but that it was like that had human people in it. Yeah, uh, weather balloon. That's what I hear a lot. Weather balloons yeah. always the thing. Uh-huh. You would think we'd have like a million weather balloons in the sky yeah. at one time, as much as people suddenly see them. Yeah, they I've never balloons. seen one. I mean, either. <laughs> I don't know if those exist. Uh, so he begins hypnotizing the hills, and January fourth, nineteen sixty-four, uh, he hypnotized them several times. Uh, throughout 64, he would put them in, uh, he would separate them and do it. That way they wouldn't be able to overhear each other's... Now, what do you think about hypnotizing and stuff? I, I mean, I don't know. I, I've always, like, kind of wanted to, like... You think would you be hypnotized? You Maybe I have been. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I, I, that shit always looks fake to me. Yeah, I, I don't... I mean, I don't think it's a thing. Yeah. Uh, but again, like, I maybe, like... I have been. Anything can happen. Yeah. I, guess. I don't think he, I don't think he could get me though. No. Not again. I mean, I do want to try. <laughs> uh, so, is there any hypnotist? Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. Can we? I would love to interview a hypnotist. And try to be hypnotized. And yeah, we could do it live. What we'll do it live. What if they fuck with your shit, man? <laughs> what if they... They're gonna fuck with your shit, man. What shit? I don't know. <laughs> uh. I'm gonna take my action, my wrestling figures in there, and they're gonna hit. You're gonna like have them hypnotize me, so you can open them. Hell yeah! Uh, I'll have you open them. So oh god, that'd be the worst thing ever. <laughs> uh, so Recorded Simon hypnotized Barney at first, uh, or first, Barney recalled uh, witnessing non-human figures, and when he did this, he got he became like really, really emotional. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He would suddenly get like terrified or start crying. Um. Barney said that due to his fear, he had kept his eyes closed for so much of the abduction and physical examination. Um, under hypnosis, Barney reported that the binocular straps had broken when he ran from the UFO. Uh, he recalled driving the car away from the UFO, but then afterwards he felt irresistibly compelled to pull off the road and, die- and drive into the woods. Uh, he eventually sighted six men standing in the dirt road. The car stalled, and three of the men approached the car. Uh, they told Barney not to fear them. He was still anxious, however, and he reported that, lead- that the leader told Barney to close his eyes. Uh, while hypnotized, Barney said, quote, I felt like the eyes had pushed into my eyes. Man. Man. He didn't say man. Yeah, he might have. He might have. Uh, I wish they would have put that in the quote. <laughs> uh, Barney described the beings as... Uh, pretty much similar, same way Betty would describe them. 
tiny uh, the beings often would stare into his eyes with a terrifying uh, mesmerizing effect under hypnosis he would say oh those eyes they're in my brain and quote I was told to close my eyes because I saw two eyes coming close to mine and I felt like the eyes had pushed into my eyes all I could see are these eyes I'm not even afraid that they're that they're not connected to a body huh. they're, they're just there they're just up close to me pressing against my eyes this dude's pretty all about eyes. Yeah. Like, his whole hypnosis is just a fetish. eyes. Eyes everywhere. Uh, he related that uh, him and Betty were taken onto the disc-shaped craft where they pancake. were separated. Yeah, the pancake. Um, he was escorted to a room by three of the men and told to lie on a small rectangular table. Uh, unlike Betty, uh, Barney's narrative of the exam was less detailed. As he continued to keep his eyes closed for most of the exam, he did say, however, that a cup-like device was placed over his genital- genitals, uh, and even though he did not experience an orgasm, he was pretty sure that they had taken a sperm sample. Oh. So, usually you gotta pay for that kind of thing. Yeah. This guy, yeah, happy ending. Barney got it for free. Damn, Barney. Uh, Betty gonna be pissed! <laughs> a tube, a thin tube, was inserted into his anus, Ooh. and then quickly removed. Um, and then he said he could feel someone s- s- uh, feeling his uh, spine, kind of like they were counting the vertebrae. Uh, Betty reported a conversation once again with the leader, would say that she, the leader would be able to understand English. Um, she would talk about the book again, things like that. Uh, he, they, Barney reported that they were taken off the ship and taken back to the car, and in a daze, uh, he watched the ship leave. He remembered a light appearing on the road and thinking, oh, no, not again, uh, but realizing that it was just the moon. Uh, Betty's account under hypnosis was pretty much similar to the dream she had had. Uh-huh. Um, the only really notice- noticeable notable differences uh, were kind of like in the capture and release part. Uh, so, yeah, be- through this, they... Uh, like all of that stuff became what everyone would start saying. Uh-huh. So like they like when you hear like that's the typical abduction you hear, like the spinning round, round thing yep. opens up. There's a little men take you back. I lost. Bro. Yeah. So that story really didn't exist until this event and this. So Betty and Barney. Yeah. So before like any time people would talk about UFO encounters, people would be like, "Oh, these like." neat funny like nice little people came down and we uh, you know like they were never like very detailed it was just this weird thing was awesome so but then they had all these details about the abduction so yeah. then everyone started coming out and saying yeah i too yeah. have been anally probed uh and sucked off with a cup device of some sort <laughs> apparently uh so after their uh take me up again or so the hills and Simon disagreed about the nature of the case because uh, Simon speculated that it was more of just Barney's rec- recollection because of uh, Betty's dreams. Like, yeah. she had talked about her dreams, and he had kind of, like, made that his own story. Maybe they both kind of built it up in each other's yeah. minds. And- um, Barney rejected that, that idea, though, of course. Um, he was fully ready now to accept the fact that they had been abducted by uh, UFO occupants. Betty, though, like, she embraced it right off, like, right off the bat. Like, as soon as they this happened, she was, like, all about this. Yeah. Like, this happened or whatever. And he was always kind of iffy about it and wondered. So, um, though the Hills and Simon uh, disagreed, like I said, uh, they all had agreed that the hypnosis sessions were effective because they were really no longer anxious about what had happened. Before, they were kind of, like, you know, yeah. kind of weighing on them pretty heavy. Probably just the fear of the unknown. They just, yeah, like, like they what know. had happened to yeah. us. Um, so after this, they go back to their regular lives. Uh, they would be willing to discuss the encounter with friends, family, and occasionally, like, UFO researchers and things. But they never made any effort to seek pu- uh, publicity yeah. or anything. Write a uh, book, make money. However, later in life, Betty would start to claim that she, there was a total number of three times, or a number of times she would say that she had seen a UFO and had another abduction. So she kind of like became like a uh, celebrity of sorts in the UFO community. Yeah. 
But yeah, so she just started more and more. I, it happened again. <laughs> like they just love me. Um, Barney, you'll never guess what happened. <laughs> All right, Betty. Sure, Betty. How many dudes let's get banged you, you this time? Let's get you back to your room. In the pancake. Uh, so Barney died of a, a cerebral hemorrhage on February twenty fifth, nineteen sixty nine, at age forty six. Damn. Uh, Betty Hill. Pretty shortly after this, I mean. Yeah, you would. Yeah, nineteen sixty nine. Yeah, uh, Betty Hill died of cancer on October seventeenth, two thousand four, at age eighty five, never having remarried. Uh, but yeah, so she would spend a lot of time in the UFO community. She would kind of like make her, like, if he died in sixty nine. Yeah. They were doing the hypnosis in sixty four. So there was only like a few years where she probably was just like, I was going to keep riding this shit. Yeah. Um, so psychiatrist would later suggest. Uh, that the supposed abduction was just a hallucination brought on by the stress of being an interracial couple in the early 1960s. Uh, Betty discounted this suggestion, noting that her relationship with Barney was happy and that their marriage had caused no problems with friends or family. Yeah. Uh, a uh, skeptic blogger named Brian Dunning noted that the hypnosis sections, sessions occurred after two years of the supposed abduction, which would have afforded these two time, plenty of time oh, to like, yeah. come up with all the details. Yeah. Um, he s- concluded that they just invented a tale, um, inventive tale from the mind of a lifelong UFO fanatic, um, which isn't supported by any useful evidence, actually. Like, he's just assuming that they're fanatics, but that they just had time to think of this. Yeah. Um, in an article written by Martin Kottmeyer in 1990, he would he suggested that Barney's memories uh, revealed under hypnosis might have been influenced by an episode of uh, the show Outer Limits, uh-huh. episode called The Bolero Shield. Um, he said that this was broadcast two weeks before uh, Barney's first uh, hypno hypnotic stuff. Yeah. Um, the es- the episode featured an ex- extraterrestrial with large eyes. Um, and he was ver- the creature was very much like what Barney would go on to describe. Um, when a researcher asked Betty about the Outer Limits thing, she insisted that she had never heard of it, and neither had Barney. Uh-huh. That they had no idea what that was. Um, sure, Betty. <laughs> uh, let me see. So they, uh, yeah, like so, neither of them would really ever. Well, Barney wouldn't be around much, you know, yeah. too long, but. Betty, other than, like, a little bit of a UFO, like, community, hey, that's her, never really, neither of them ever sought attention for this or whatever, but, uh, like I said, this, their story influenced all the, like, yeah. UFO encounter stories to come, so not only that, but in pop culture, um, there was a movie made in 1975 starring James Earl Jones and Estelle Parsons. Star Wars? Called The UFO Incident. Oh. So close. Okay. Uh, and then in 1966, uh, there was a television series called Dark Skies. The story gets reenacted on. Um, it was in Carl Sagan's minis- miniseries, uh, Cosmos. Um, it was used in an X-Files episode. The graphic novel called Saucer Country, which is really awesome. Yeah. Uh, it has a whole storyline about this experience. Huh. Um, in the second season of American Horror Story... Uh, a couple in the show are abducted by aliens, and it's based off of these this story. And then on the Joe Rogan experience, this is a weird one in February of this year. Uh, whoever mixed MMA fighter Angela Hill, uh-huh. she said that she's Barney's grand uh, granddaughter. So like she talked oh, about wow. this a little bit. Um, and then kind of like how let go of my purse, kind of like Bobby, uh, Bobby Hill. Show, yeah, uh, sorry. Kind of like our little uh, hour or so away, uh, Mothman, uh-huh. uh, Point Pleasant, where they have all the Mothman stuff uh, and make a pretty good little business yeah. out of the museum and everything. So right across the field um, from where the this event uh, supposedly took place, there is a local little convenience store called the Notch Express. Uh and they Brain take, it's covered in all the UFO newspaper clippings oh, about yeah. this story, whatever. 
And uh, so they've kind of turned it into their own little, like, Mothman museum. Yeah. Like, made, made a little bit of money off yeah. the story. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, those two, their story became... Betty and Barney. Kind huh? of the landmark story for all other UFO abductions. So, mm. yeah, I don't know if I believe in... I mean, I think it'd be pretty awesome. Uh, I think if... I don't know. Part of me says if they were real, we would have seen them by now. By now, yeah. But maybe not. Yeah. And it'd be crazy if, like, the government's been, been able to, like, do this one thing yeah. so secretly and Ask the aliens about so COVID. perfect. that Maybe they got something. Maybe. Maybe that's where we got Maybe it. somebody did storm Area 51. Yeah. Picked up something. Spread it. Did Area 51 happen, man? I don't think it did. Maybe we were abducted. If it was the capital, I would have. Yes. All right, so that's uh, that's my story for the week. Alien. That's the alien story. Uh, what do you, you got? Uh, did you bring the thing? Oh, yeah, I brought right, it. We're going to do an ad break, okay. uh, and then we're going to be right back. And uh, we're going to come right back at you with the amazing theme song to Joel's Feel Goods. Feels good. Yeah. So what do you got this week, man? Well, this week I have a story in honor of the NHL season starting. Okay, yeah. Just started, uh, what, Wednesday night? Yeah. But this actually happened last year. This happened February 24, 2020. Okay. David Ayers, uh, official position going into the game between the Carolina Hurricanes and Toronto Maple Leafs was e-bug. E-bug. He was the emergency backup goalie. His first job for the night, oh, yeah. Zamboni driver. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, during the game, both Carolina goaltenders got hurt by the second period, like midway through the second period. And uh, what the NHL does is they have emergency goaltenders on hand like this. And this guy's a Zambini driver. He has, the, you know, obviously he's played hockey before. I mean, he works at the rink and everything like that. And he was available to either team, but since Carolina needed him, he put a jersey on, entered the game, second period. Carolina Hurricanes were up 3-1. to one. Uh, Didn't start off the best way. His first two shots against him uh, found the net. So Toronto was able to tie it up. But then uh, between periods, he told his teammates that he was calm now. You know, he kind of got his wits about him. He's going to go out there and do better. And he went out in the third period and stopped all six shot attempts. And the Carolina Hurricanes won 6-3. to three. And uh, Dave Ayers, uh, 42 years, 194 days, became the oldest goaltender to win his debut game in league history. <laughs> wow. And it's even a bigger deal because... David had a kidney transplant in 2004. His donate, his mom donated a kidney to save his life. And uh, for his services, he got paid $500. Okay. He got to keep his jersey. Okay. His uh, stick was sent off to the Hall of Fame. So that was pretty cool. That's pretty and, awesome. Yeah. You know, you got a, a hockey yeah. stick in the Hall of Fame. In Raleigh, where, North, you know, where Carolina plays, they gave him his own day. And the team Jeez. even sold shirts with his name and game number, and the proceeds of that shirt went to the local kidney foundation. Well, that's pretty awesome. In the area. That's cool. I remember hearing about that last year, and I really dug the story, and uh, I was trying to think of, uh, I was racking my brain for a feel good, and I just remembered NHL started, and that made me think about this guy. Yeah, I do remember that story. I didn't realize that, that like, there was all that other stuff there, like, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize that. What are the odds that t- both goalies yeah. get hurt? I guess each team dresses two goalies, and they have, like, uh, they even last minute they'll call up, like, one of the minor league goalies, you know, to dress just, or something Just like in that. case. Just... Yeah, but that guy said he was, like, in one of the rooms inside the arena or whatever and got the call and was like, hey, we need you on the ice. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, yeah, that's I so mean, cool. At least it was, like, what was it? What do like, you know when it was in the season? Like, was it a... February? I don't know, because... Well, February, so probably pretty early. Yeah. Okay, because like, how crazy that but would I be. don't know, because of COVID and everything, were they further along? And because this thing... Had COVID hadn't hit yet. But, yeah, oh, yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, but you don't know when... that in their season? Right, Because right. I think there was an NHL champion last year or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I don't like hockey as much as I used to, but that's right. a pretty badass story to be, like, 42 years old... 
yeah. have to go in in front of people because people were in the stands. You know, right. February, you know, there's still crowds and uh, win the game. So if you win the game, though, like you've got to be like you, you you've got to just be like. So I mean, like these two other guys, they uh. They're better than me. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, you need me next week, coach? Yeah, how many games have they won for? Ah, but if you come with us, who's got his Zambini? I work for five hundred dollars a night yeah. in a jersey. <laughs> in a jersey, <laughs> send my shit to the Hall of Fame. That's my feel good. Yeah, that's a good one. Thanks. Yeah, I did. I watched a little bit of the uh, Vancouver game the other night on opening know. night. So I've never really been a huge hockey fan. I like playing it on video games. That's fun. Yeah, check people. Yeah. So I like movies about hockey. Uh huh. Uh, if you've never watched The Goon, Slap Shot, I highly recommend it. It's got yeah. Sean William Scott, Stifler, Stifler, <laughs> Scott. I don't know why I said Scott. Squat. Uh, yeah, <laughs> turned into Sean Connery there. <laughs> uh, yeah, what was what did you say? Slap Shot, Slap Shot, uh, Mighty Ducks, Mighty Ducks, Knuckle Puck, Knuckle Puck yeah. was great. This yeah. needs to be a movie. I don't yeah. think it'd be a that whole kid, movie, that though. dude's like, uh, he's not doing good. He's not doing great. <laughs> he might be doing better now. I don't know. No, I don't think he is. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was knuckle puck, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's not doing great. Yep. Uh, rest in peace. <laughs> Man, we had a feel good goal. With Jesus Christ, rest in peace. I don't think he's dead. He's not, but I mean, you know. Remember that guy that won the game for the Carolina Hurricanes? Yeah, David Ayers. Feels yeah, good. feels good. All right, yeah. Let's uh, let's end on that note. Uh, we still got the Facebook contest going. Uh, all you gotta do is go to our Facebook page. Uh, Facebook.com backslash middle aged mediocre. Top post on there. You like it. You leave a little comment for us, and you'll be entered in a chance to win. All the details are there. Go check it out. Uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, uh, drop us five stars. Uh, leave, a, leave a review. Glowing review. Glowing I'll review. Be after you. Joel knows your address. Yep. There's one thing he knows how to do on a computer, and that is. That is hacking the people's accounts. <laughs> <Don't say that. laughs> Joel is an identity thief. Oh, I don't even know who he is. I'm searching for my own identity. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, you should make a whole. I'll talk about it. Okay. It, you should get a Twitter though, where you. Uh, you know what? Never mind. I'm good. Because like you don't you don't let people you don't like you people can't just follow you. It's locked. Yeah. So you should make one that's not locked. Oh, okay. That's not. But like it's not you. Yeah. It's just like your where you can post thoughts. Uh huh. Jack Handy. And then you don't have to worry about like being anonymous. Yeah. And people. Yeah, I don't spying. have to be like Joel for that works here. Yeah. Some people name me from that. Yeah. Be, yeah. You can just be. I'll do it. Whatever you want to be, man. All right. You can be whoever you want to be. Look for me, but it won't be me. But so it won't you be won't you. know it's me. Or will it be you? Or will it be me? Will it be me there's posing one, as Joel? There's only one set of footsteps. Is Joel an alien? <laughs> I was asking you, it was yes or no. All right, we'll be back uh, next time. Come examine me. Go and probe. <laughs>